What's poppin' T-Squad? It's me and Keisha and I'm here with this week's Black Ink Cruise. This week's What's Poppin' T-Squad? I'm here. Ugh, what the fuck is wrong with me today? What's up, Papa? <laughs> no, no, no. Squad is me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's Black Ink Crew season five, episode one and two review. It was a double season premiere tonight. Both episodes are quite good, so let's get right into the episode. Start off this episode with C's on his king touch shit. Homeboy is feeling himself for real. It's the grand opening of Black Ink Crew on 125th Street in Harlem. The shop looks really good, far better than the one on one uh, 13th. Is clean it just looks nice i love the decor and everything that he did with the place good job sees so they're having a toga party for the grand opening ceremony duchess says that she has recouped her investment on pretty and eek i'm happy to hear that good to see a black woman in business doing good might not like her because of the way that she acts but happy that her business is doing well sky is ready to move up the food chain she just tired of being the shop court gesture <laughs> everybody misses the old shop and old shit and i don't miss neither one of them motherfuckers sees appoints ted the shop manager of 100 of 113th and he reveals that you know he's not closing the shop either sky and duchess are surprised by this revelation and are kind of miffed about it because they like what the fuck did this nigga do like he don't do shit so how the fuck does he go from not doing shit to now being a manager of a fucking tattoo shop but all right behind the scenes see on that is ted don't run that motherfucking shop for real i follow that nigga on snapchat and i ain't don't hardly ever see that motherfucker in 113th unless they filming him nor sky or ever the fuck there they're only there when filming they're always out of town promoting doing this doing that so i don't believe at all that they work there on a regular everyday basis Ted comes into the shop on the first day, tapping the ceilings and shit, and everybody looking like, what the fuck are you doing? So next thing you know, he pull out a stripper pole. He want to have a stripper pole in the shop and wants to change the shop to an all-female shop. I think that's a dope-ass idea. Can he do it? I don't know. We haven't seen Ted do anything really business-wise. Next thing you know, they having a big-ass party for Teddy's Playhouse. And they got the stripper pole up. He didn't cut a big ass square in the ceiling. It just looked a ghetto mess. I would have been afraid that some roaches and mice might crawl about that motherfucker. I wouldn't have been up in there. Um, he invited strippers. Everybody's having a good old musty time. And then he tells everybody to come outside because he has a huge surprise. There's a life-size cake. And out pops this little Asian bitch. <laughs> she wants me. Y'all want to order a special fried rice and scrap bread going in the vet soda? I was like, shit, I'm hungry, bitch. What you got to off us so everybody thinks she is stripper they're like when you gonna take off your clothes we want to see you because you're kind of cute she's like no i'm not a stripper i am a tattoo artist and her name is young bay young bay is actually a little cute little something she's really pretty she got all her teeth and they're straight like mine like she didn't even need nothing done her teeth ain't missing a tooth they ain't yellow they ain't decaying i was like about time they have bitches that actually know what fluoride is she kind of comes off a little bit stank and she's really feeling herself and Sky ain't feeling her. And to get to know her, Sky takes her out into the back and tries to talk to her. But Bay is very cocky and she says she's covered up a lot of their tattoos. And Sky looking at her like, okay now bitch, simmer it down child young fat. Simmer it the fuck down. Bay says that, you know, I'm coming here and I'm going to save this shop. Y'all need me. And Sky was like, uh-uh, homegirl, you ain't saving shit. I'm the HBIC up in this motherfucker. So I need for you to calm down, little pot sticker. Seas has hired a new receptionist over at 125th Street named Kit. She's a very pretty girl that looks like she knows what a dush is. Uh, DMX is coming by and he's there to get a tattoo by Seas. And C's needs for Kit to cater to his every whim and need. In her backstory, she says that she wants to be a socialite and how she's always hanging out with celebrities back in D.C. where she's from. And all I get from Kit right off the bat is she's looking for a come up. 
She's doing the most. She's doing too much, too fast, too soon. You cute girl, but you ain't that cute. I'd have seen better looking hoes. Calm the fuck down, ma'am. Girl, we don't like you. Try again. And I'm like, you hang out with all these celebrities and you want to be a socialite, this, this, and that, and the other, but you're a receptionist. And a glorified ambassador of Black Ink Crew. No. So, DMX comes to the shop. And he just had his baby number 15. Marinate on that. He's getting the little boy's name tattooed across his neck. And every time he's come to see he's get a tattoo, he got to drink a whole bottle of Hennessy. And I'm like, oh my God. A crackhead with Hennessy is like goddamn me a vagina with no clit. Ain't nobody got time for that shit. So DMX flirting with Kit and she said she don't give up the Kit Kat. I'm like, bitch, yes, she would if he still have a coin. Use a lie and a half. If DMX was DMX in 99, bitch, you'll be all over that dicks. Nobody believes you, ma'am. DMX gets toasted and he, while he getting his tattoo, he all in a chair like this. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's murder. And I'm like, uh-uh. Nope, time for me to go. Mm -mm. I rebuke you, devil, in the name of Jesus. He's slipping and sliding all over the floor and shit. Like he, Tom Cruise, and that one movie. But then we switch to Melody, and Melody is pregnant, and she's having an at home water birth. And I really like Melody. She has a really good spirit. She has a good head on her shoulders. I like her a lot. She gets a phone call from one of her girlfriends that said that she was going to Black Ink on 113th to get a tattoo done by Melody. But when she gets there, Ted gave the appointment to another tattoo artist. And Melody's like, I don't even know I had an appointment with you, girl. Nobody told me shit. So obviously, Ted is booking appointments under my name and then giving my clients to other tattoo artists. She's pissed off about this because she's, a, you know, a, a, about to have a baby. She needs all the coins she can get. So she's pissed. So Sky got a new crib. She's moving on up, and she is happy about this. I'm happy for her. Cute look, you know, little spot. Donna comes over. She ain't seen Donna a week in weeks. Donna has been, you know, ducking and dodging her phone calls. And Donna says she had to be MIA for a minute because of the situation with her and Maxwell. That nigga still taking her through the bullshit. So apparently his BM still talking shit about Donna and, um... Maxwell gets mad at Donna for trying to shut her down. She feels like the only thing he wants from her is his money and he's hella disrespectful to her. She feels like he's been hella disrespectful to her since he's got locked up. I'm like, girl, he was hella disrespectful towards you before he got locked up. But okay. Um, he calls her while she's sitting there with Sky and she answered the phone. She like, hello. He's like, what's up, bozo head? And I'm like, damn, nigga, that's how you talk to her? And she just sitting there like a battered wife. And he calls her a shit dumpster. She need, tell her she need to be slapped. She a stupid hoe. And she just like, see, this is why I don't help you out now. See, um, thank you for reminding me. Okay, and they get off the phone or whatever. And Sky just looking at her like, girl, it couldn't and it wouldn't be me. So she says that in her green screen that he used to hit on her before being locked up and how she just feels like she's been brainwashed by him and how she secluded herself from her family and friends because of him and basically how he ruined her life. And anybody out there that's going through domestic abuse, it does not get better. He will not change Pick up on the signs from the beginning when a nigga saw sort of disrespecting you, calling you out your name, talking bad to you. That's how it starts and then the abuse physically starts. Physical abuse, mental abuse is not okay. Get out now. And Donna just seems to me like one of those girls who is desperate and dire need of love. It's obvious she, she didn't get it at home. She suffers from low self-esteem and she just out here just floating trying to find her way through life and I just pray that she gets it together because she's a really pretty girl. C's come by 113th and he's pissed off about the stripper pole and the hole in the ceiling and I would be too. Bay comes in and she was like hey how you doing who are you? He was like uh bitch I'm your boss and she was like oh excuse me how? He tells her that he wants to see some of her work. She's like, actually, I'm about to do a thigh tattoo right now. And he's like, I'm going to and I want to see it. So when she gets done, he shows her the tattoo. And the tattoo absolutely looks good. She is a good tattoo artist, no matter how cocky she is. On her Floyd Mayweather shit, she really is a good tattoo artist. When Bay tells us about her background, we found out that she fled Korea when she was 22 years old because she used to get abused back home. She came to the United States with nothing but $80 in her pocket. She was homeless sometimes. She worked at nail shops. Her 
here, there, and everywhere. She knew how to draw, but she didn't know how to tattoo. So she lied to get her first tattoo artist by claiming that she actually knew how to tattoo. And I have to give it to her being an immigrant and coming over here to the United States and making her way from where she was to being on television now. You got to give her a clap and a handshake. She is very cocky, but her work backs up her mouth. Um, I think that she is a nice girl. I think she's just cocky. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's, as the season progresses, we will end up liking Bay. I think we will. The other girl that we're going to talk about soon, I don't really know about her. Sky and Donna are getting together to go to karaoke, but Donna get in the car with a whole garment bag, and Sky like, bitch, where you going with this bag? Like, we about to go to karaoke, and she real quiet, and she like, Donna, what the fuck is going on? Donna, what the fuck is going on? So eventually, Donna tells her that she has a wedding dress because Maxwell apparently has been giving the money she's been giving to him on his commissary to his baby mama, who he cheated on her with. <coughs> And I'm like, well, girl, what you expect from a nigga that's missing one tooth in the front? Like, what in the hell do you expect from this nigga? So, she says they're going over to Ashley's house so she can show Ashley that she can have him. I'm like, girl, obviously you're still invested in this nigga. Because if you got to go over to a bitch house to show that you don't want this nigga, you ain't over him at all. You just like the drama. The girl apparently has been calling down the phone, talking all this shit, saying how Maxwell say she dirty and this, this, and that. So Sky is like, bitch, I'm not down with this shit. I'm on probation, girl. You can have it. I got time for this food shit. I got on one of my good wigs. Uh-uh. Then we switch to Melody, who comes to the shop to confront Ted about, you know, stealing clients and shit. And she tells Seeds, you better check this nigga. <laughs> you better check his ass. And she all pregnant and hormonal and shit. Ted don't feel like he did anything wrong. But Seeds tries to calm Melody down and calm Ted down. And Melody like, nigga, fuck this shit. I'm up out of here. And Ted says, you know, she ain't been working forever. Shit, I did give her client to somebody else. And Seeds like, you cannot do that. That is tattoo artist rule number one. You never give somebody's client to someone else. It's just like in the beauty salon. You don't do that shit. We switch back to Sky and Donna. And Donna is hopping out the car. And Sky is like, girl, don't do it. Don't do it, Bernie. Don't do it. Sky, Donna like, fuck that. She hop out the whip anyway. And Sky like, well, shit, since she about to do it, I'm about to get out the car and watch it. So then we see Donna pull out a thing of uh, lighter fluid and start setting her goddamn wedding dress on fire. And Sky's like, shit, I'm about to motherfucking Snapchat thing because this bitch is crazy. So Sky watching as she burning down her dress and shit. And then the baby mama Ashley come out the project building. And Sky like, uh-uh, oh, oh, bitch, time to go because I'm not about to go back to jail for your ass. Uh-uh, I'll watch this shit from the car. So the girl come outside and her motherfucking biking shorts and shit, her biking short jumpsuit. And I actually called Donna stupid bitch. She's like, you's a stupid bitch. What the fuck are you doing over here? You's a stupid, dumbass bitch. You're a dumbass bitch. What the fuck are you doing over here? And Donna standing up, she was like, I just came over here to show you I don't want them. You can have them, Ashley. You can have them. And Ashley's like, I already got them, bitch. But you know what? I'm not never about to do all this talking. Either you gonna run up or shut up. And then next thing we see is Donna trying to run over to her to hit her. But you know Donna got all that bottom weight. <laughs> so it took her like five minutes to get over there to her. And Donna tried to charge over to her to fight her. They start fighting. And Donna throwing these little baby throws. And I was like, why you look like you got a little tile of baby fist? Like, what is up with these little hits that look like this? And security jump in and try to pull them apart. Somehow Ashley get away from the security guards. And that bitch made a motherfucking LeBron James mash dash. Jump over there to Donna. And she trying to fight her again. And Donna still hitting her like... And I'm like, Donna, what is up with these hits, girl? This is that's as hard as you can hit. You better throw them thunder thighs on that bitch. Do something. And then Ashley, like, he always gonna be with me. This is some forever shit. Donna, like, bitch, you can have him. I don't want him. And I'm like, why do either one of you niggas want this nigga? He's missing a front tooth. And he's in jail. He's no fucking prize. But when you have low self-esteem and feel like this is all you're fucking worth, this is like the niggas that you get. Episode 2. Sky is trying to tighten her, vag <laughs> her vagina and shit. Because she's saying her motherfucking pussy lips look like beef jerky and, <laughs> and shit. And so she wants a pussy rejuvenation. And she wants her pussy to look like Amber Rose pussy. Amber Rose really does have a pretty pussy. I don't know how it looks now if she had bash. But before, if y'all ever seen them pictures that got leaked of her that she had sent to Wiz when they was, you know, first dating, she has a glorious, pretty 
vagina. Check them out. Oh, she comes back with a bald head and a pot belly and a whole new bitch named Nikki. And we learned this nigga didn't go to rehab down south. He took his ass to San Francisco and was working at a whole other shop this whole time and met this bitch now they dating. He say that he don't need motherfucking rehab. He got sober on his own. Same old fucking dumbass Oh shit. Oh, by the way, who wants to be called Richard now? Nigga, that don't change the fact that you a fucking cokehead. Boy, shut up. He says he's changed and wants to be taken seriously now and that Nikki will help him with his sobriety. Can't no motherfucking person help you with your sobriety to help you stay clean. You have to want to stay clean on your own and go through the process of rehabilitation to know how to work with abstaining from fucking drug use. That bitch can love you all the fuck that she want to and give you encouragement but if you see a pile of blow there you gonna fucking do it if you want to. So shut your dumb ass up. And he says that Nikki is everything he's ever wanted. She's a pretty girl but I just smell a snake all over her. Snake. Snake. Sniveling snake. Duchess and Kit go to find a gift for Melody to make up for what Ted did and they sit down talking about how Ted became the shop manager over there on 113th. Dutch says, you know, I don't even know how this nigga became a manager. He went from the couch to the manager. I'm like, well, Dutch, bitch, I'm right here with your ass, but okay. So, Kit asks her, how is it over there at 113th? And Dutch is like, ghetto, nasty, dusty. You don't want to go over there. It's the PJs. Mm -mm, bitch, no. And then we see Donna. She come by Sky's house because she need a place to sleep for a while because it's just way too many memories of Maxwell over there at her old apartment. She tells Skye about him beating on her and secluding her away from family and friends. And Skye starts crying because she wants more for Donna. And says that Donna's one of the most genuine people that she's ever known. And that she doesn't deserve that. And Donna tells her, you know, I just want unconditional love. And I don't want to search for it anymore. I just want to have it. And I'm like, girl, you have to have it in her first before you can have it from the outside world, mama. She needs counseling at least five days a week just as much as oh shit i mean excuse me richard needs fucking rehab five seven days a motherfucking week um i pray for donna and that she gets it together because i like donna a lot and i hope that she does not go back to this nigga or get into another abusive relationship oh shit oops sorry richard comes to the 125th street and a button up in the tie, I guess that makes him feel like, you know, he's important, like he's a changed man. And he tells C's that he didn't go to rehab and was working in Oakland. And C's like, what in the fuck, nigga? You had me and her crying, tearing up because you leave. And I'm thinking that you've been gone for the last four months to get help. And this whole time you had your ass in Oakland and at that, working at a whole nother shop. Oh, bitch, your ass ain't changed worth the damn. Get your ass out of my goddamn face. So... Seems is like, nigga, you snort more coke than Pablo. How the fuck you think you don't need rehab? But okay, girl, if that's what you want to tell us. Seems is like, I have to set boundaries with this nigga. I can't keep on letting this nigga take me down this destructive ass path that he's on. He tells Richard that he does not have a space for him at 125th Street. Oh, shit, begs him for his job. And since that's his boy, Seems is like, look, you can't come back here right now, but I'm going to give you one more chance and I'm going to let you work at 113th since you think that you know you so strong enough to stay away from drugs and alcohol let's see if you can make it down there first and if you can then i'll bring you over here to 125th street and i'm like this is the same fucking storyline since season one that we have had with oh shit every season it starts off with I'm a new person. I'm a changed man. I'm not doing the old shit that I used to do no more. Mid-season. Oh shit, I'm back on, on drugs. I'm back drinking liquor all day, every day. My life ain't shit. I'm gonna try. I need to be a better daddy, but I can't be a better daddy because of my drug use because of these bitches. And at the end of the season, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go to uh, rehab. I'm gonna get my life together. Watch and see. And in the next season, it's the same shit over again. I'm tired of old shit. I'm tired of him and them big blue ass lips of his. I'm just sick of it. Get him off of my screen. Sky asks for Donna's job back at 113, but Ted says no. Ted wants to give this chick that Dutch is disapproved of back in like season two of some shit named Tiffany a job at the shop. She's a Spanish chick. She comes to the shop and Sky off the rip is like she is slit. I can look at her eyes and say she is slit. I don't like the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so Tiffany is talking to everybody and she calls Duchess Raggedy and says the Duchess was just to her and Sky like I might not like that bitch but you just ain't gonna come up here talking about Duchess to us on your first day at work, which I 100% agree with. You don't even know who in this room is close with Duchess or what. If you got beef with Duchess, which she, you know, could have a legitimate beef with Duchess if Duchess, you know, kept her from getting her job back in the day. But at the end of the day, don't come in there talking about her and that's her nigga's shop. Like, that's just not smart. Tiffany's backstory is when she was growing up, she felt picked on because of her size and she won't tolerate tolerate disrespect on no type of level. I'm like, okay, so she got that light skin. I was picked on my whole life. I got a motherfucking point to prove that hoes ain't gonna test me because I'm light skin with curly hair and I'm Spanish. Okay, girl, if you gotta feel like you gotta walk around proving yourself, then you absolutely do have something to prove. Richard tells Nikki over a bowl of top ramen, probably chicken flavor, it didn't look like beef. <laughs> That he's working at 113. She get mad because of his sobriety and shit. And she's like, but didn't you talk to him about this? What about you going over to 130? He's like, bitch, I can't change his mind. I got to prove myself. And I'm like, girl, why you sitting up here hooping and howling over him working at 113th Street? Worry about that big patch of blush you got on your goddamn cheek that look a whole entire motherfucking mess. Look like you got a whole motherfucking solar system on your cheek. Girl, bye. Then we see Sky go over to 125th Street and she tells sees that she wants to raise in a high position and sees is like what kind of position she's like i want to be assistant manager and i think that's a good idea for sky even though she really don't work there for real uh but for the television purposes i think that'd be cute for her to be assistant manager because ted needs some motherfucking guidance ted trying to turn that motherfucker into the playboy mansion into a fucking sex shop so She's like, I got to think about this. You know, I don't really know. And he was like, I got to talk to Ted about this. And Sky like, what you need to talk to Ted about? It? Ted can't even do his fucking job right. And so she proceeds to tell him about Ted hiring the Tiffany girl. And that she might have to, you know, box with this bitch because of her mouth. So it's the night of the Boom Boom Room reveal party. And everybody's there. And they're turning up. They're having a good time. Everybody's drinking and dancing. And Richard and Nikki come by. So he can show her how good of a place 113th Street is for him to work at. Not knowing that they're having a big ass motherfucking orgy party there. And Tiffany walks in there like, oh my goodness. What kind of shit is this, Richard? So Kit comes by to check out the shop for C, she knows because she's the ambassador she's his eyes and ears and so she introduces herself to everyone and then she introduces herself to to Ted and she's like I'm Kit from 125th Street the 125th Street and he's like what the fuck that mean like bitch what and she was like you know I mean because I heard that y'all was raggedy over her repeating what the fuck Dutch said and I was like oh bitch wrong thing to say so everybody immediately get mad like bitch who the fuck are you talking to like who the fuck are you bitch who tiffany start checking her like bitch you don't come up in here on that type of bullshit like who are you to say some shit like that that ain't cool and kid is like oh and what is your title and she was like i'm the bitch that's gonna fuck you up and i was like well all right miss tiffany so bae jump in and she like how you represent c's like this bitch is funny like you're a fucking joke and kid says you know when her and then Kit says in her green screen that, you know, it ain't my fault all y'all shaped like a pack of Newports. <laughs> Good read, Kit. Good read. So, some meth head girl, I don't know if she work at the shop too. She a new tattoo artist. She jump into the argument. And Kit then go over to Tiffany's face. And Tiffany rise up like, bitch, you ain't about to get in my face. Next thing you know, they start trying to fight. But it really ain't no fight because security done jumped in. Then a meth head girl jump in the fight. Then some other bitch jump into the fight. And it was just a whole melee. Nobody won the fight, really. Because I watched it back several times to see if anybody got any good licks in. And it was just a bunch of her pulling in bullshit. <sighs> And I gave episode 1 and 2 a B plus. It wasn't quite an A plus, but it was a B plus episode for me. Let me know what you thought about tonight's two-part season premiere of Black Ink Crew um, down below in the comment section. Once again, if you have not voted on the Color Me Pink February book club pick, please go to the video and take the poll now. A lot of you have been asking how I do the poll. We cannot have a slow book club y'all we can't be the slow click it's not that hard right at the end of the video when i say here is the poll it shoots across your screen of your phone 
You see this I button right here. You press this I button and the list pops up. Then you press the button of which book you want us to read for February. That is how you take the poll, ladies. Y'all a little slow, but I still love you. So, please go to the video and vote now. I will be revealing the results on Sunday night's review of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Please make sure that you check out this week's episode of Since You Asked. It's really, really good. We had some really, really good questions. So, please make sure to go watch that video. I love you all so much. Have a blessed and safe week. It's rough out here in these streets. Make sure to pray over each other, love each other. Don't be fighting in the comment section because some of y'all been acting up a little bit here lately. Um, and love on each other and support each other as women and men. We're going into this new inauguration this week and Lord help us over the next four months. We're going to need each other more than ever. So just love on each other. Stay peaceful, stay positive, stay prayed up. And I love you all and I will see you God willingly Sunday for my Real Housewives of Atlanta review. Love you all so much. Bye.